Hello, everybody. This is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday at 1 p.m. And you could also find me on the consciousresistance.com and the seedsofliberty.com. So today we have Fred Fairbrass, who is the guitarist in Right Said Fred. And you would also most likely recognize him from his infamous video, I Am Too Sexy, <laughs> from the early 90s. Um, so he's a truth teller and he's gonna, we're going to be talking about, you know, um, how he became a truth teller and perhaps his, you know, the steps and, um, and phases that led up to, um, you know, his questioning the status quo as it stands today. So, uh, so Fred, um, Hi. so why don't you tell us about, you know, how you got started down this path? Okay. Um, initially when the band broke, uh, in 1991, 92, you know, you become very famous and there's lots of nonsense written about it in the press. And over a period of years, I started to think some of the stuff, you know, if, if the smoke and mirrors in the, in the entertainment industry is so, so all, in, all engulfing, I, it's just crossed my mind that this can't be the only area of information that just kind of tells, what, tells you what he, he wants you to hear. And so this sort of, the, you know, the bit by bit, my brain started to, to get into gear. And then it wasn't really until 9-11 I saw the towers come down, and then subsequently started reading different reports and 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 uh, the you know, the um, the uh, the reports from different engineers and the architects and the engineers um, um, uh, dot org and then guys like Alex Jones and then I got picked up on people like um, James Corbett, Scott Horton, these different sort of guys, and uh, and I just sort of think this doesn't look right, it doesn't feel right, and so I just I I I I'm all, I've always felt we've been we we're just fed lies on such a colossal basis and in, in colossal amounts every day um and i think it's just um i did yeah, it was a but i saw death by a thousand cuts really little bits of information chipped away at me and i suddenly just woke up about, you know on the mid 2000s and just they thought this is just nonsense <laughs> you know and so it took me a while i'm not, not exactly I'm not exactly, uh, you know, not exactly breaking ground here. I'm, you know, trying to catch up with you. There's loads of people ahead of me, um, but uh, I found it really interesting. And you know, also people have preconceptions. If you write write your song like "Too Sexy," it suits their preconceptions that you might be a moron. And um, and, and obviously, we didn't do ourselves any favors in one sense. We you take your shirts off. We were very fit at the time, and um, people want you to be a bit of a gym junkie and a bit of a moron. And if you prove not to be that, it kind of, people go, oh, think about, he can talk. <laughs> Whoa, amazing. Ties his own shoelaces. Um, so, uh, so the, yeah, so I've just been really, got really into it in the last, about the last four years, it's gained, gained a lot of momentum. I, I, I just like the fact that these people like Alex Jones and yourself and Richie Allen and all these guys are just trying to look at, look at it from another perspective. Because we, because mainstream media has its own agendas, and I think it's really good that people are, are out there trying to express different views. Yeah, I think nine eleven really did jostle people's, um, yeah, you know, feelings yeah. of reality. Um, yeah, and um, but you know what's interesting is uh, the response to uh, the United States to nine eleven. So you know, there's all all these theories about you know. Uh, who did it, or if it was an inside job in the government, or, yeah. or whatever. So to me, it doesn't really matter, right? Like uh, who did it? Um, the, the let's say let's let's just assume it was the, the you know the Saudi Arabians that did it, or some Middle Eastern okay. country, and 19 hijackers you know hijacked these planes, and they killed what close to 3,000 people or something yes. like that. And so our retaliation is to kill one million. Middle Easterners, <laughs> yes. You, you know, it's like it's like if somebody you know, um, you know, uh, you know, assaults you or your family or kills you, your your response is to kill them, their family, their extended family, their yes, <laughs> their distant cousins. You know, everybody. Yes. That's the equivalent, and you, it's it's just insane. The, the kind of, the kind of. Well, I, yeah, I think that's what triggered people's thoughts is that you know it, it was so clear that. There was there was agendas whether the agenda was in place before 9/11 or, or it was used as a as a, as a catalyst. But to get the regime change, get into you know, get in, into oil 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 rich territories, put you know use 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 uh, not just the Americans but the British are just as guilty as are the Spanish and the and the Australians and they've all got different troops doing different uh, in, in different areas of the world. And uh, and I think it's, you have to look at what the agenda. 
how the agenda is played out. And democracy is certainly not something that, in democracy in the Middle East, doesn't interest the Americans or the British governments at all. <laughs> so I don't care about that. Um, and I think it's, you know, what, you know our, our, our biggest embarrassment is Tony Blair, who, you know, you may not be aware, but at the time, they, he sold himself as this, as new Labour. And I, I did, I'm, I'm not a fan of voting. I don't think voting does anything. Uh, but new Labour definitely uh, came in all, 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 all guns blazing and, and, and you know, you'll see the end of, the end of corruption. You'll, and people actually believed it. And Tony Blair was brilliant at selling it. And he has turned into one of the most toxic XMP, XPMs that we have ever, ever produced in this country. I mean, he's just, and people hate him. I mean, he gets shouted at in the street. He can't go anywhere because people spit and shout and, and load this guy because he lied. In, 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 you know, he, he sort of got you in. He, you, you, you kind of annoyed at yourself for believing him. You know, it's like finding out your best mate is banging your wife. It's like, wow, you know, what are you, this, this is not the deal, you know. And, and that's what the Tony Blair situation, it's, and he's become so toxic and such a liar. And um, and now the Labour Party are trying to distance themselves from him, although he doesn't seem to be helping that. And I, I think um, I, I, whatever, whatever, I, I don't know what the truth is behind 9-11, obviously, like many people. But certainly when you hear people like, Judy Woods or w William Binney and these people with experience and with a knowledge and they're discussing what they believe. I, th I think you have to take note of that. I, th I think you'd be silly not to. Yeah. So, so you and I were discussing before we recorded um, about, you know, labels, right? Anar what's an anarchist? What's a volunteerist? Yes. What's an anarcho-capitalist? Yeah. And, yeah. and one thing that, um, that I have learned, you know, from studying this stuff is, uh, is that, you know, there's one, you can, you can look at the, you know, how things are applied, you know, in the real life, or you can look at the philosophy behind it. So, so when people just look at, you know, leaders like Obama and Tony Blair mm -hmm. and Bush, you know, they vilify yep. these specific leaders and say, you know what, if we just had the right person in power, <laughs> things yeah, would, would work out perfectly, right? Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's the, that's the, um, you know that's the temptation that that politicians yes. try to cater to. They try to cater to people's, um, you know, how do you say, gullibility and na naivete. Yeah. You know, and pe uh, people want to believe. They want to believe in someone. It's good to have, you know, it's good to see someone. You watch, you know, so, uh, if you watch the Martin Luther King uh, uh, speeches, he is very. He's, he, he's there's a beautiful thing to watch and listen. Someone believing in what he says, and but how, when do we ever hear that now? You know, really, I, I think it would be great if. In the next, like you've got the American election um, kicking off next year, haven't you? The the primaries and all that sort of yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go Hillary. Yeah, uh, right. yeah, wouldn't it be great if they had to wear um, the the labels of their sponsors, yeah. like racing car drivers? <laughs> so you knew if Hillary Clinton, for example, stood up and she's got Monsanto and the Saudi, you know, the Gulf states, and all these like a racing driver. These at least you would know. Well, hang about, Hillary. If you get in, you're going to get a phone call from Monsanto and Exxon and Microsoft and Penchuk, and then the Saudi Arabias uh, uh, have all got interest. So, what part of you do we get? Because they've all paid, they've paid hundreds of millions or tens of millions. Um, and I think that's it's the same in the UK. Not not quite so uh, obvious in the UK, but the, but. Uh, the the um, all both you know, the all political parties have donors, and uh, the Labour um, uh, typically have the unions, and the uh, Conservatives typically have uh, the banks. You know your your version of Wall Street. That's kind of how it divides in a very sort of crude way, um, and I think you have to take that on board because what you're not you're not getting an unencumbered. Um, president or prime minister you're not they 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 will sit in their chair and go well, this is great hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I got there and the phone will start ringing and i think you know you only look at obama who you know did say uh, um that he was going to sort out guantanamo clearly someone has said do you know what barack don't go near guantanamo that's not going to happen mate you know next <laughs> what do you want to do next oh i don't want to do the you know i don't i don't want to roll out the patriot act which he's been more aggressive with the patriot act and more anti whistleblower than any other any other, any other president and i think you have to look at that so they clearly there are people i have this argument all the time with people in england and i say yeah when we get this new prime minister the the, the, the head of gchq which is your your nsa uh, won't change Heads of the bank won't change. Heads of securities, that doesn't change. Uh, Google, Starbucks, Amazon, all these people are still in place. 
So where's your power? What exactly are you bringing here? Because you're here for four years, eight years, if you're really lucky. These guys are here for decades. <laughs> you're just passing through. So where's your influence? You walk into the Bank of England and, and this guy's sitting there and he's got, you know, he's got his house in Barbados and his house in Connecticut and everywhere else. And, and you walk in as a brand new prime minister. What are you bringing to this? You're nothing. And I don't think the British public understand that. And I think the same, slightly different, I think, in America. I think, I think um, yeah, the, 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 the um, Clinton dynasty and the Bush dynasty do have clout as a, as a, as a, as a, like a uh, almost like a commercial force, if you like. Um, we don't have that here. It's a very different animal. And they, and they come and go. So if I was the head of Starbucks and I say you so-and-so in the White House, I wouldn't, who cares? What are you going to do to me? I run Starbucks. Get lost. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think the, 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 I, I find the whole thing just farcical and I find voting the most ludicrous idea in the world. Uh, and I get, people get cross at me all the time on, on, on social media. And, um, I, and they say, oh, you're so lazy sitting around. You know, I say, what, so what? Okay. So you think ticking a box every five years makes you really proactive. You know, really? Exactly. You know. if, if voting changed yeah. anything, it'd be illegal, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and I believe that. I really think if they thought this could change, it changes what we, how we perceive the world. But it doesn't really change in reality. So, so when I talk to people about you know voting, it's it's either I, you know I, I I say you know it's either voting is useless and counterproductive. I mean, or well, well, useless and just a waste of your time, or yes. it actually achieves what you want to and what you are doing. People don't really understand this, but. What you are doing when you vote is you are attempting to subjugate your neighbor, right? It turns everyone into a little dictator trying to impose their worldview on other people, right? By right. force, yep. by the guns of government, right? Yep. And and so that's <laughs> that's what you, the political process is. is It's a contest to who can impose forcefully their yes. worldviews on on the rest of the population. Yes. And if yep. you lose, you get their their view forced on you you know and it's just yes. such a violent system that uh, people i don't understand how people make the connection that you know government is community it's everybody coming yeah. together you know we're all in this together <laughs> no yes it's us no. it's us and it's the and, ruling class it's a clear difference yes it is there's a massive difference yeah and also the ruling class aren't, aren't even in government the ruling class are behind government telling government how this is going to work uh, that's, I, I really, I can't imagine for one minute that, you know, you've got, you know, you take a guy like, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, guys like you know, Bill, Bill Gates, the, 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 the amount of money, the guys that run Google, the amount of money and influence they have to imagine that they won't make their feelings felt fairly strongly <laughs> to, you know, Hillary Clinton or whoever happened, Jeb Bush, whoever happens, whoever happens to be in the race. I think it's naive. These people... You don't get that to be that successful and powerful without feeling that your view needs to be heard. I, you know, I, I just don't, I can't, if I was a billionaire and sitting around watching this happen, I would think, well, hang about, I've got a say in this. I would. Yeah. Because, and that's a, that's a major, that's a major complaint that a lot of people, when I talk about, you know, a voluntary society completely absent of government coercion, that's one of the first objections I get is wouldn't corporations just band together and, you know, become a cartel, control the marketplace, shaft the customer, raise prices. And, you know, what's to stop from a corporation from like buying weapons, buying tanks and just forcing well, they do. forcing people to, <laughs> you know, forcing people to buy their product. And I'm, and I'm saying, wait a minute, what is the difference between that fear that you have and what we have today called government? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> what is the of difference? Course. Yeah, of course it's the same. I, I find the whole thing just, I, I find people's view about it just absolutely insane. And um, I think it would be great. In, you know, we have, our elections are in uh, on May 7th, I think, is, is, the elect, is election day. And I think if you had a 5% turnout where everybody just stood outside Parliament and booed, uh, you'd have to undermine it. You, you, there, there would be you, there'd be no credibility for for any of the governments to move, any of the parties to move forward. There'd be it would it, you. I, I personally think you need that degree of non-compliance for a change to happen because nothing is going to change. I, I don't know if you've read about it. But in the UK, we have huge, huge issues with child abuse in 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 Westminster in government, and allegedly in, it goes up as far as the royal family and big business and. It's a very big um, scandal over here. 
we are never going to get to the bottom of it, ever. These kids will never get um, proper um, uh, representation under any of these gov governments because they all have something to lose. And I, I, and I think um, same as private speech, uh, freedom, sorry, uh, privacy and, and fr um, uh, free freedom of speech is being pissed in the toilet. It's, people don't realize the degree to, wh to what, what they're losing. Um, and I, I, in, the, in the UK, there's a lady um, who was arrested because she um, stood outside, she stood on um, Whitehall, which is the road that runs very close to where the Prime Minister lives, and she read the names of the dead soldiers from a newspaper. She got arrested under the Terrorist Act. Hmm. Wow. I mean, really, yeah. And so it's, it, I, and I find all that stuff very scary. And there'll, there'll be cameras in our houses next. That's what they want. You know, it'll be that insane. It's a crime for private citizens to reveal the crimes committed by government. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, so um, I don't know if you follow uh, Larkin Rose at all, but uh, he talks about oh, you know. Um, I Lark should. Lark you do. I, no, I should clearly. But yeah, I yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Definitely, I definitely look him up. He's really an awesome uh, personality, and I. Uh, okay. I read. Uh, I know I, the name. But yeah, he's posted a bunch of videos, and he's written a couple of books. But um, okay. you know, one of his. Um, so, so basically, government, according to according, I think he he basically coined this term, the belief, the myth, the belief in the myth of authority. So, so government is basically founded on two, uh, found two basic pillars, which is the one one is taxation, and the other one is the belief in the myth of authority, and they are both necessary because without the belief in the myth of authority, so it's like when people believe it, it's not you know authority is not just the right it's not just the ability to rule it's not just you know i can enslave somebody and subjugate them because anybody can do that right but you Ooh. would be called you know a, a rapist or a murderer or yes. or some thief right you would not be considered government right so the ability of authority has to be given legitimacy if it's authority yes, it, it is legitimate right so if it's authority they're taking your money and it's not extortion it's called taxation right and yes. if they're killing people overseas it's not called murder it's called war the war on terror yes. right you know if or they're conflict or a conflict yeah. if they're if they're you know <laughs> counterfeiting money you know, yeah. in the central bank, it's not called counterfeiting. It's called quantitative easing or currency creation yes. or the Mandrake mechanism. Or, so, yeah. so there's all these political euphemisms applied to government that if the same exact thing were done by private citizens would be criminal. Absolutely, right? of course. So, so this is why the belief in the myth of authority is what separates people from viewing government as just a big gang, a big mafia, yeah. the largest mafia mm -hmm. on a geographical area. And, yep. you know, it, it's what makes it completely different than, let's say, a local mafia who controls like a few towns, let's say, you know, because the people in these towns would not consider the threats and commands of the mafia as laws because then it would, yep. then it would be viewed as legitimate. Rather, they just view them as threats and commands. So, yes. so this is the basic difference when we when we can stop. And this is what this is what I'm trying to do and what many people on the Voluntary Virtues Network and Larkin Rose is trying to con tell people that. You know, when you believe in an authority figure, what you're saying is somebody, this person has superhuman rights that I don't have, right? They yes. can do something and I can't do it because it would be criminal, but they can do it because they're yeah. special. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, well, one of my uh, big bugbears is taxing taxed money. Yeah. So, I, you know, you, right. I have $100 and they take, they take $40 and I've got 60 left and I go and buy something. It's taxed. I put pressure in my car. It's tax. Mm -hmm. Everything's you're taxing every single thing people do. I mean, it's it's insane, and it, and it's theft. <laughs> it's just theft. I understand. We've all got to, got to contribute. We're all going to make our. You know, we all, you, that stuff doesn't happen without money. I get all that. It makes perfect sense. But part part of the taxation, um, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Um, belief system is is uh, is is based on the fact that women to believe that they. Um, spend the money wisely. Well, clearly they don't. Billions are wasted. If 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 it was efficient, then our, the the tax at source would probably be enough. But because it's inefficient, because there's corruption, because there's extortion and lies, they need more and more. And they could take a hundred percent of our money. It would not be enough, because it's it's theft. These people have no interests in in our interests, none. And that's my that's a huge. I get quite upset about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just you know saying how last just I think is this week, right? Was an uh, um, you know tax day, National Extortion Day, in, uh, yeah. in the United States, um, yeah. and 
And so you have to wonder, like like what you said, you know, what what is what you know, if I tell people hundred percent of your income is stolen, that's slavery, right? And then zero yep. percent of your income is stolen. What what percentage in between is it not slavery? Right? Absolutely right. And, exactly. And where, 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 where's the criteria? Yeah. And the, there there is no percentage that is not if anything above zero percent is indeed slavery because even if it's point five percent, if it's forced against your will, then yep. you you don't own your income at all. Yes, the government is exactly. just is giving you back a gift of whatever they didn't take, right? Yeah, <laughs> they had it's yeah. completely arbitrary and completely forced. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it is completely forced. And I, and I think what, what drives us insane over here is, is what you exactly what you say. It's a corny old statement, but one rule for them, one rule for us. And we had the MPs' expenses scandal, where basically they were just their expenses had got out of control, so they would. Go on holiday and it's our expense. They'd buy a second car for the wife. It's our expense. That has been tightened up a little bit, but not nearly enough. And they're still creaming the system. And um, it's become a grape train. Uh, public service has just become a great way to earn some money. And, um, and it looks good on your CV. Uh, and off you go to the private sector, you know. So I find it's you – know, sorry. No, no, it's okay. Uh, I was just gonna say you reminded me of a uh, a video that Larkin Rose did called um, "If If You Were King," and I'm, oh, not, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you're familiar. Also, there was um, you know, in Plato's uh, "The Republic," he mentioned um, you know, his famous book "The Republic." He mentioned philosopher kings. Like he he believed that an ideal society would be ruled by philosophers, right? That they're the right, only okay. people that are that are um, you know eligible and able to lead its society, uh, you know, mor see. morally okay. and justly. So, so basically, in in his in his uh, video, if you were a king, he's basically saying how there really is no such thing as a moral um, authority figure because even because you know any 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 mandate any edict they do has to be forced on everybody categorically yes. against the will of the people right even if it's voted yes. on it's voted on okay then 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 they each you know then they force it and you know it's it's a government is always a one size fits all and even if even if the king or the emperor or the president or the prime minister did nothing absolutely nothing just sitting in his in his home just that would still that would still be considered extortion because he's surviving on taxation, which is again yes. involuntary, right? Yes, so, it is, yeah. so there really yeah. is. I mean, even if he's helping the poor, like you know, that's what that's when people say, well, don't you know, if you don't want to pay taxes, you're saying you don't want to help the poor. You're saying you don't want to you know help the elderly and the sick. No, of course not. It's just like I don't want my the fruits of my labor stolen from me, and and done with whatever the politicians think is. Is worthy, you know. If if we're yeah. gonna help the poor, we can help them voluntarily. People donate to charities, to you know, different kinds yes. of institutions like that. We can yes. do that. So You're also with with the, with the, with the huge debts America has, the huge debts the UK has, Europe, the euro is struggling. All our taxes go into this abyss, which is the deficit, and then they have to borrow money back from the banks to pay for the very things that they've taken our tax for. What all we're doing is chipping away, is chipping away at a debt that gets bigger and bigger. So this idea, I, I, I have this conversation all the time, and, you, and people say, well, you know, you, you, you've earned good money, you should, you should pay this amount. So I don't mind paying my tax, but it's being wasted. That's my problem. It's, it's, uh, first of all, it's going into this whole called debt. They drag it out again to pay for something. They're paying the bank's interest on my tax money. Mm -hmm. this, I, it's, it's an insane system. And, uh, and I, 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 I find the whole thing just... Um, I find it depressing how people just um, follow what pretty much they're told to do by mainstream media, particularly in this country, because we have a we have a history of, of 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 rebellion in this country. We have chopped off kings' heads if they've pissed us off. You know, we have. You know, we've, that's what the English spirit was about for centuries. We were we were quite insane. You know, we wouldn't we we would just wouldn't take any nonsense, and so we would go and attack government buildings. And now we roll over. Everyone just goes, yeah, okay. You're so busy watching X Factor or some other nonsense, you know. And I, and I, I kind of think it's a shame. We seem to have lost our spine and our bite, you know. I think so. And what, what we, we're only here for such a short time. We should try and make, should, should try and make some, some impression. Christ's sake, you know. <laughs> so anyway, definitely no, no, no. So, so you know, talking about you know your taxes and and you say you say if there were, went to something useful, then you would have no problem, yeah. right? 
But yeah. the, the way I look at it is, you know, the, fa- the fact that, you know, because the way volunteers describe government, it's a monopoly on initiated aggression, right? They have right. a monopoly on force. They have all the guns. They have the tanks. They, yep. have, they have everything. Yes, they so, so they can enforce the edicts of the politicians by yes. the police and the military, right? Those are the, those are the agencies that give it teeth yes. and force, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. So, so basically, there is really nothing that can compete with the government. That's the definition of a monopoly, right? So, yeah. so if, if taxes were not going towards something useful or efficient, what could we really do about it? Again, like you said, go back to voting. Just press a button. That's all we can do. <laughs> or yeah, you know, well, write, exactly. write to your politician, you know, you know basically yeah. begging, begging your politician, <laughs> begging your master, more accurately yes. put. Um, yeah. So, so, I, I think I think non non compliance for me just people just stopping going. Do you know what we're done? Yeah, because and I, I have a real thing. This is our country. I mean, I know you're in America, but I'm in the UK. But I'm English. I pay my tax here. It's my freaking country, and we should all stand. Just go right. Unless you represent us fairly, unless you do the right thing, the game's up. You can't have our tax money. You can't go on holiday to Barbados on our, our taxes and have your mistresses and all the other stuff you do. Um, you, let's start again. You know, we, new line in the sand. And what's happened is it's we've got such into such a mindset. It's not just you that we have no control. Well, we do. It's ours. We are. We are. We are the masses. And it drives me. It drives me mad that people think they don't have control. And as an individual, it's easy to think you don't. But I think what you know, just sharing information is a degree of control. To, you know, it, it, it all it all adds it, it all adds um, you know, um, f- um, fuel to the fire. It all does. Um, and I think this. I think what's great about the internet, uh, which is this one of the last bastions of freedom, if you like, where you're right across the world, people sharing sharing their ideas. And I think it's vital and the information that we can get. And that's the next thing that they will, of course, try and control. Yeah, yeah. With the recent with the recent uh, passage over here, the net neutrality act going on. Yeah, what yeah. about what about in the UK? How is the um, the internet controlled or regulated? Is it well? It's it, it, they, they want <laughs> the Prime Minister David Cameron uh, want, wanted to have some sort of uh, code uh, and 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 basically for people to have like a login. Obviously, someone at Amazon or Google or someone said. Actually, day, that's not going to work, mate, and you're going to interfere with us making lots of money. So that's not really a very good idea. So they haven't really decided what they want to do. They know that there's an online presence that makes them uncomfortable, and they know that they, they want to do something about it. My guess is they will take their lead from the States because that's what England does now. G- GCHQ takes its, lead, takes its lead from the NSA, and I think we will follow your lead. That's my gut feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of people um, actually support uh, net neutrality, unfortunately, um, because yes. you know they really think that uh, you know these enormous corporations, which again have have inextricable ties to government, so you can't really say, you can't really say that they're completely separate entities. So that's yeah, no, no. That, that kind of confuses people's minds. So you know you know so so they see like you know Comcast or AT and T or Verizon, you know uh, or Cablevision providing you know um, monopoly like. Um, services and very few competitors, yes. but, but again, people don't tend to see all the regulations and laws that that stifle competition and and re- and restrict people from starting up their own, you know, broadband companies and competing with them. Because yes. once you allow that, once you remove all the regulations and and barriers to entry, the prices of all of these services will pl- will just plummet, go way way yes. down, and the quality will go. As, that's just how the free market works. This is the incentives of the marketplace, right? Yes. So yep. so it's pretty insane to think that. You know, if government begins to exert control over the internet, <laughs> again, net neutrality is basically like everybody's going to have equal, um, you know, internet speed. I mean, of course, one size fits all, right? <laughs> it's, it's the yes, same yeah. thing all the time. Um, but it's really absurd to think that you know, if somebody pays, if somebody has a you know a, 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 an increased need for fast internet connection, let's say you have a business and you really are dependent on having high speed internet, you know, because you talk to people overseas. Why should that person have, you know, have to come down in their quality of service as the same guy who just watching videos in his basement, you know, like for yeah. fun, like it doesn't make sense. You know, if, if no, people no. are willing to pay more, they should get more. <laughs> that's what yeah, the marketplace, absolutely. that's what the marketplace is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we send you know, with, the, with the band, we send large files for film and the other stuff I told you we do, where stuff we're doing. And I need a really good Internet speed. 
and I'm happy to pay for that. I need a good broadband speed. I'm happy to pay for it because I need it. Uh, and that's how that that's that's about the only premise it should work on, really. Um, sadly, if you don't have the money, I suppose you could say, well, that's not fair on that guy. But that's how the whole the whole market works. You can't always reduce something to the lowest, not the lowest, but the, 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 the you know you, it, that one size fits all, as you say, won't necessarily work. Um, and that's just it's also it's human nature for some people to have different demands. But, you know, uh, some people have the some people want a Ferrari. I don't. <laughs> want a Ferrari <laughs> but if they have the money to it they should be allowed to buy it if they have that ear you know um, so I think it is yeah, the one size if, if you're not careful you do go to the old East European mentality where all, all the cars look the same and yeah. all the houses look the same apart from the very people who are in government who, who have lovely cars exactly. and lovely houses you know, you know yeah so basically people are afraid to be unequal in freedom but they would rather yes. be equal in slavery right so if you yes, really yeah. if you really desire a society where you know you have free food free health care you know nobody owns anything or everybody owns everything um, and we all have the same job why don't you just go to prison right because that's yes, essentially yeah. what it is you're protected yes, it is, yeah. you know? you're yeah. completely surveilled you have no private property no freedom yep. of association no freedom of speech Yep. <laughs> and that's the definition also, of communism, socialism, and basically prison. Yeah. But also, we have to accept people are different. You know, if you took a town and and you, and everyone started off with a thousand dollars at the beginning of the month, at the end of the month, some people would be bankrupt. Some people would have ten thousand dollars. Some people would have the same thousand dollars. <laughs> people are different. We have to accept that. And the tr my problem with this, as you say, the government one size fits all, it doesn't accept that. It doesn't want us to be different. And, uh, and I have a huge problem with that because some people, uh, we, we, yeah, we do act to different situations differently. And that should be celebrated, not, um, um, not, not restricted. Yeah, and, and then going along with that is is um, people think that if there's a problem in society, it's the fault of the rich, and so the solution should yeah. be is to steal the productivity and the success yes. of people who actually worked for their wealth. <laughs> Which is fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've done. We have this demonization thing in the UK, uh, this too rich thing, and there are some very very bad rich people. There are some very very bad poor people. It's uh, they, they just are. They not you know, every every um, um, every every demographic has its has its villains and heroes. It just does. And in the and I think you have to accept some people are very good at making money in an honest way. Those guys who started up Google, whatever their ties may have may have, may or may have not been to the NSA, and I, I I know there's all sorts of discussions about that. But just having the idea of we're going to start this search engine is a pretty it takes nuts. It just, it, you know, and society needs people with that drive and energy. In the same way, it needs nurses, firemen, uh, doctors. It, it, that's how it works. Uh, and I, and I, I think the you know, success should be celebrated. And those who are unable to success should be supported. Some people can't play the game. That's not their fault either. You know, some people aren't designed to this mad game we have in this capitalist world that we've got. Some people are not built to be succeed in that in in that arena, and they shouldn't be penalised either. And I think it's, it's it's finding a balance, you know. Yeah, the um, the whole idea of communism is basically one of uh, jealousy, enviousness, and envy and, and covetousness. Like you you envy the person who has more than you, right? And so basically, you you feel it's your right to take by means of government, of course. Um, yes. That which people, you know, the, the those things that people have. What they consider to be too much, right? You know, yes. how much money do you need? How many cars do you need? How many houses? Do you need? Well, to yeah. me, to me, the the better question is, how did they, how did they achieve that wealth, right? Because if they achieved the wealth by providing value to society, let's say for example, Steve Jobs, right? Nobody, yep. nobody had to force people to buy iPhones and iPads nope. and iPods, exactly right? right? He became wealthy because he provided a high quality product that people flocked yeah. to. They love they love the guy for it, right? Absolutely right. That's yeah. the definition of the free market. And you know what the definition of government is? Creating a crappy product that you have to force people <laughs> at gunpoint because nobody yes. would ever buy it voluntarily. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. I mean the whole the whole coffee shop uh, that just came out of you know I don't know how long Starbucks have been going, but it seems like the mid nineties. Something like that. Um, I'm not a Starbucks fan particularly, but someone somewhere sat down and said, let's do a designer coffee shop. Charge a bit more for the coffee, but make loads of different coffee and make the, give, it, give, it like a, 
give it like a lifestyle, you know. And it worked. You've got to get, you have to say, whoever came, whoever started that, I don't know, I'm, I'm not familiar with, with the workings of Starbucks or, or Cafe Nero or whoever else, but it's an idea that they saw through. They had the energy to make it work. And on a slightly different level, we're, we're, we're involved in a couple of independent movies. And when you see the work, a writer, this one movie we're doing, this, the, writer, the guy has written it, directed it, and produced it, and the energy levels he's needed over the last five years to get this to the Cannes Film Festival is breathtaking. Wow. And, you know, entertainment needs that. Society needs those people with that energy and, and desire. That's, it just, you have to so applaud it and not suppress it. Trying to make a movie in the UK, I mean, the government are so anti-art in the UK. It's really? just, hmm. it, it's horrible. It is horrible. And you have to, everybody goes abroad. Everybody goes abroad for their money. Hmm. I mean, it's the same as us. We don't work in the UK at all. All our money's in Europe and America. Hmm. It's, it's, it's where we get paid. Um, Britain just has... It's, it does not support its own artists. It doesn't support its own film. It doesn't support its own theatre. All the all the theatre in the West End is driven by foreign money from tourists. It's not driven by... Um, I mean, you know, the only thing the government really supports is opera and some of the classic arts, you know. But so, yeah, you wouldn't... I mean, if we... We we we're, yeah, we're a pretty small band. We just yeah, we've sold a lot of records and stuff, but we we generated money for the country, uh, and you, you, it's not seen like that. Imagine what the Beatles generated for the for the UK or the Rolling Stones. And these these people are not nearly celebrated enough. Their art is celebrated, but as an export, they're not. As a commercial entity, they're not celebrated enough. They've they've created huge amounts of wealth for all sorts of industries, and I I find it just bizarre the way we don't really um, embrace that over here. I'm not sure what it's like in America, but that's, we certainly don't hear. Yeah, that reminds me of a, um, you know, the, the the activity of of wealthy people to actually move their businesses, you know, close down shop. Let's say, for example, in America, and and open up a plant, let's say in Mexico or in, yes. you know the, um, um, you know, like some uh, like Vietnam or Thailand or Cambodia yep, or exactly. somewhere like that, it's where they can pay people less. And then people, yeah. you know, people over here are saying, you know, that's horrible. You know, you're not, you're destroying the American economy. You're abandoning. You know, you're taking, you're taking away American jobs. So you know, these people are, are you know, exploiting it. <laughs> but then uh, the first thing I ask these people is, okay, wait a minute. Why are they doing that? Why are they, re why are they closing down their company in America and moving it across an ocean, which itself is an expensive venture like that's not cheap is. you know why yeah, would they go through the expensive. hassle of doing that and and yeah. you know if if uh, if the tax if the taxation in a country is getting so stifling and oppressive that the business owner makes a de decision to move across an ocean i think that's pretty indicative of an oppressive of, of, government <laughs> absolutely you should those people the first thing the, the low i mean the uk we called it the council which is your uh, which is your local government and they should be bending over backwards to keep businesses in their town. They should be making it easy for, for, to be self-employed, easy to start businesses. I mean, trying to start a business in the UK, you know, the red tape and the, just, just the rent and the, and the taxes. It, 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 as you say, it, it's built for the purposes of the oppressor. No, nothing to do with the freedom of, of, uh, of, of movement or, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, um, entrepreneurial um, mm -hmm. Sort of spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the, the guy. Uh, there's a very famous inventor in the UK called Dyson. It was the Dyson Hoovers and the Dyson Kettle. And he had to go to France. He couldn't get any money out of the UK. Mm. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> you know, these and these people should be valued, and they're not. And it's, hey, hey, -ho. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. You're right. You're right. The the wealth in a society is is generated from the entrepreneurs, from the people, it is. the small business owners, is. from the from the inventors, from people who yeah. you know with the creative spirit <laughs> that that go out start yeah. businesses and create jobs. That's how you create. Yeah. That's how you increase wealth. That's how you increase standard of living. And uh, I don't know if you if you heard about what Hillary Clinton recently said a few months ago. She said, um, you know, the uh, she says uh, businesses and corporations don't create jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. she was called out on that completely. So many people oh. said, "What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Do you understand anything?" You know, you know. Basically, yeah. she's saying, you know, if, if politicians write on a piece of paper, we're going to create ten million jobs. That's it. Poof, it's magic. Ten million jobs will be created. <laughs> and they seem to think that they have that kind of, you know, supernatural, godlike deity well, that power delusion. that they yeah. can just yeah. will wealth 
you know just yes. they did they just print print money and oh poof we, you know we're all rich yeah. <laughs> like yeah what? with um with hillary clinton's um uh, running for the uh, Democrats. What's what do people think in America? Do they think um, Bill Clinton's past is going to catch up with her because of his association with people like Epstein, for example? And there's quite a few sexual assault allegations against Clinton, isn't there, Bill, Bill Clinton? I was wondering, is there a general feeling that they will that will that will sort of bite her on the ass eventually, or, or that won't be an issue? You know, um, I'm sure that a lot of people have done, uh, you know, research on that kind of stuff. Personally, I don't really look into any politician anymore oh, okay. uh, at all. Like, uh, okay. I just have isolated myself, stepped back, and, you know, I, I categorically, <laughs> categorically oppose, um, you know, people trying to use government to improve their lives because I think that's a complete yes. contradiction and oxymoron, you know, because the yes. definition of government is the violation of property rights, you know, when you talk about is, taxation. Yeah. And, and yeah. by the way, I, I wanted to mention one thing. Um, when you were saying if, if um, you know, you, you don't like – you don't like to pay your taxes because you know it's going to be wasted, right? It's going to be put to inefficient means. Where, Based so, on, that, I don't mind paying taxes, but I don't like. I don't, but I, I do. I, I do have a problem with paying them from the point of view that I know that they're not spent wisely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so I wanted to say that with voluntarism, one thing that I understand, actually, not, and also Austrian economics, is understanding when something is a monopoly, like the government, right? And it has absolutely no competition from any outside entity. What, what incentive do they have to actually please the people? They have no yeah. incentive because yeah. taxation is not a voluntary thing, right? No. People are forced to fund, you know, the NSA or the war on terror or, you know, yep. bailouts and subsidies and, and warfare and welfare and, and yep. all these things. You have no choice where your tax money is going. So, so if, if they are wasting it, what do they care? Because they, we have yeah. no choice to pay, you know? and they're getting paid anyway. Yeah, exactly. They, they get paid. They get paid for the pleasure. I, I, absolutely right. I mean, I find it's just it is an insane system, and it's a very interesting concept. Imagine if you had two governments, and one had to be more appealing and commercial than the, than the other. You'd suddenly get this market, open market system within government that would try and please us as the, and you could you do subscribe up to whichever government you thought was fairer, then they'd have to play a very different game. Well, that's well, quite, that's, if, if, <laughs> if you're talking about a scenario like that, I, I would contend you could no longer call them governments because if they're actually, no, exactly. trying, if they're actually trying to please the citizen, you would, you would more likely call them businesses, right? Yes, because they would, then, yeah. they, then they wouldn't be able to force you to fund them. You would, you would be able to choose to fund them voluntarily, yeah. right? And that would be the definition yeah. of a business. And you would exactly. have a com completely different dynamic. <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a hospital that my brother and I raise money for on a regular basis, called the Royal Marsden. It's a very uh, um, progressive cancer uh, uh, research hospital, and what they do, which is fantastic, once you, they have a, a um, regular fundraising, we get involved in it, uh, and they do this online stuff, and they show you where your money's gone. It's brilliant. So you've raised, you know, we've just done a march. Uh, did a marathon. The marathon raised about one and a half million pounds. I mean, we didn't, but everybody. Yeah. Uh, so, let's like, say you know two and a half million dollars or something, and um, and they show you they get they get they took cameras into their uh, into their into into their theatres, and they showed you work that the doctors were doing with the equipment funded by the charity. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. It was just amazing. And you saw well, that's where our money is, and they and they're very open about you know the exact what the executives get paid and the administration costs. It's a very transparent and. Um, it's quite reassuring. Imagine trying to do that with government. Say, okay, we, we, can you show me where my <laughs> Trans car tax is gone? Transparency, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, okay, you've taken my 250 pounds this year for my car tax. Yeah. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is it ring fenced? Is it is it even in the is it even in, in transportation? I bet it's not. Yeah. Most, I bet it's it's just been sucked up by the deficit. You know. Well, so. well most likely, most likely, I think 60% uh, of it anyway over here goes towards military spending, which basically yes. means it goes towards death and destruction, and occupations, yep. invasions, and drone strikes. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Anything you yeah. can imagine related to yep. uh, the military. Um, yes, but, exactly. But there's a there's a famous um, Austrian economist. His name is Walter Block, and and what, one of his famous lines is, um, you know, we should. Pri He's like people ask me, what, you know, should we privatize everything? And I and I respond, you know, this, we could we should privatize everything that walks or everything that doesn't walk. And since everything walks or doesn't walk or moves or doesn't move, then <laughs> we should privatize everything. <laughs> because again, when you privatize things, you are changing the incentives, right? Because now yes. people have to please actually please the customer because. Because if you don't, you're going to go out of business, right? And a business cannot thrive 
without profits, right? And profits must only be obtained voluntarily, right? Because once you begin to use the guns of government, you have a mutant, you know, um, wicked variation of the free market known as crony capitalism or corporate fascism, right? Mm. And then once you completely force it, you have government. In it. <laughs> um, so, so this is the beautiful thing about, you know, the private, you know, free market is that they have to... Uh, they have to please the customer. It's all about accountability and responsibility and transparency. There is no other way around it. Like try, you know, try um, being a vendor on, let's say, Amazon and selling something. And then, you know, somebody sends you money and then you don't send them anything. What's going yes. ha to uh, happen to you? <laughs> you know, yeah. people, no, no, I understand the concept. Yeah. You yeah. know, people are going to write up, you know, this guy's a fraud. Don't ever, don't ever do business with him. Don't ever say, you know, people... Word gets out. Reputation means everything, right? It's all about yes, it reputation. Does. Yes, you know? yeah. I, I think, I, I mean, I personally think with, so, with certain essential services, you need to ring fence them. They, they should ideally be non-political. They should just have the money they need. Health, fire, you know, uh, oh, uh, looking after the elderly, looking after the homeless, the infirm, the vulnerable. That should all be just taken from our tax. I, I don't mind paying taxes. For those people to benefit, I don't mind that at all. Um, but the trouble is, that's not the game anymore. That's yeah. not what's being played, and we're all being we're being lied to. Is there any last message that you want to give to my listeners um, who are listening? That uh, you know, relating to your views on uh, on government? Well, I just think I just think it's information. Just inform yourself outside the mainstream media. I mean, there's some you know, there's great journalists like Greg Palast, or there's. You know, there's reporters like yourself and Richie Allen, and uh, and whether you agree with these people or or not, listen what they have to say. I listen to Alex Jones. I I don't agree with a lot of things he says, but he's trying to work out outside of the norm, as is the other people. Scott Horton, I mentioned, and blah blah. Yeah, it goes on and on. Listen to individual. Yeah, you know, like um, talking about the economy. I I think Martin Armstrong is a really interesting guy. Um, he's and um, uh, an interesting economist, um, and you know, got people like uh, Karen Houdis, and I think these people just have a knowledge, uh, and and they view things differently. I love listening to William Binney, and I think guys like this are just they, they don't come with the agenda that mainstream media does, and I think it's up to people just to inform themselves, just just for one minute, turn your phone off, turn the X factor off, and just. Just for ten minutes, just see what people are saying. Just, just you know, and that, that, that's it. And you might think it's all bollocks. You might think, oh, I don't agree with any of that. I'm, I'm a Hillary guy. I'm going to vote for Hillary. Well, at least you've made the decision, but don't make it without the information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's some, some, cri some critical thinking. Never hurt anybody, right? <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank exactly. you very much, Fred. Awesome uh, conversation. I appreciate it. So this is um, Danilo from Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network, uh, theconsciousresistance.com and theseedsofliberty.com. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Cheers.